I'm glad. Shout on. I'm glad he's the God on the mountain and the God in the valley and the storm, whatever situation you're in, he's God. The Bible said in the beginning, God. If, the, if it had stopped right there, that would have been enough. Amen. And uh, boy, how much we need God in this day in which we're living in. Uh, I, I, I believe we're living in the last days. Um, Somebody said, I've heard that ever since I've been born. Well, that means it's closer now than it was then. The old timers up where I'm from, they would say we're living in the Saturday evening of time. Amen. On the seventh day, he rested from all of his labors. I believe we're getting ready to enter into that rest. Writer wrote, he said, let us therefore remain that we enter into that rest, lest we fall after the same unbelief as those before the river they crossed the Red Sea and came over. We need we need to stay in the way with him. Amen. Amen. And uh, I'm glad for that. Well, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 tonight. I think I told him right. Good to see different friends tonight. We haven't seen in a while from different places. Thank you for coming. We are humbled and honored that you'd come and uh, share with us. And uh, I get to, I tell every fo folks everywhere I go, I I love Brother Edmonds and his dear wife, and of course we love this whole church, but I tell folks, uh, and uh, I've never got over the way he did that birthday that time we were here. Uh, some lady was having a birthday. Y'all remember that? I don't know if he does that every time or not, but uh, I got so good tickled that morning, and uh, he said he learned a long time ago that he, you never ask a lady their age when it's their birthday. And we sung happy birthday and everything got done, she was sitting back there about where Ashley and Blake was, if I remember right, and he kind of leaned over and said, how much you weigh? <laughs> Listen, a young pastor can't get by with that. Don't try it, fellas. <laughs> He's been here way too long. He, I'm telling you, he can get by with that stuff. I, got, I tell folks about that, and Brother Charles, we love you, and Miss your wife, and we just love coming here. Think, I don't know how many years we've been coming, quite a while. Started coming uh, in the youth revival just singing uh, with Calvin Ray a long time, I guess right after we come to the camp, youth camp. And uh, I was in, uh, we were in Pigeon Forge and some couple came up to me and said, uh, I want to get a picture with you. My girls grew up in the camp there where you preached all those years and they, they're upset that we're here with you and they're not. And I thought, well, I don't know if I were to take a picture and upset them or not, but uh, uh, all of our stuff out there is free, but pictures are $15. And uh, <laughs> no, I, I'm just teasing. <laughs> I get tickled. Folks tell us we're crazy, but, you know, that ain't, we, they ain't the first ones ever told us that. And they say, how in the world do you just give your stuff away for no, no, no fee or anything? I say, hey, you just do it. It's mine. I can do what I want to with it. And uh, God blesses it. God, God takes care of it. We've given away now over 300,000 CDs. And uh, it's just amazing how God does it. I, you can't write down on pencil and paper. You can't sit down and make it figure out. But if you let God have it, it's kind of like the loaves and the fishes I preached on. He takes care of it. And you folks here at this church that supports us and those individuals here tonight that support us monthly, we are grateful for what you do. The word's getting out. 60 or 72 countries now. 72 countries our ministry is reached by internet and CD ministry stuff. So we're thankful for that. Yes. Well, I was coming down the road just this evening. I thought all day we, we ran over to Maysville and got a few items and had some lunch. And uh, I was thinking I didn't go into the Walmarts. I sent them in. and I didn't need nothing. I, I, I'm not a shopper. I'm a buyer. If I need something, I go get it and leave. My wife likes to shop. Shane likes to shop. And that's nothing against that. I mean, that's fine. I just sat in the van and I was studying. I thought I'd preach on something else. And coming down the road, God put this sermon on my heart. I don't have a note with me or nothing, but uh, that don't really matter. He, if he orders it up, he'll take care of it. But I'm convinced tonight that somebody, maybe more than one person, needs to hear this sermon. Uh, I love the singing. I, I love to sing. 
But uh, when there's lost folks in the building, I'm, I'll be honest with you, my, my heart and my mind is consumed with that. And, and uh, my mama says, son, you need to slow down on this thing. I said, mom, I'm consumed with it. I, I know everybody may not feel that way, but uh, that's why we go and what we do. And uh, if you're not saved tonight, I want you to listen uh, to what the word of God has to say. If you have your Bibles and you found your place, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 21, I believe is where we're starting. If you'll stand with me, if you're able, for the reading of the word of God. We'll look at this passage. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, afterwards they that are Christ at his coming. Then cometh the end. When he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put all rule and authority and power, put down all rule and authority and power, for he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. Here's what I want to preach on tonight. Verse 26. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Amen. If you like titles or sermon message text, here it is. The day death dies. The day death dies. Lord, we love you. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for this place. Thank you for your people, this great congregation gathered out here tonight. Lord, I ask you now that you have blessed in the singing. Lord, you have blessed your folks. And God, we have rejoiced in that. And I ask you now to use your preacher just for a few moments as I speak to the outside. You speak to the inside, Lord. And, and God, I know you'll save those if they'll come. I know you'll meet needs if they'll come. You said it was your good pleasure to give unto us the kingdom and not your willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Lord, I pray you crown this service tonight with souls on the altar. We'll step over in the shadows and give you all the glory and praise for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. It sounds strange in our day and time to say that there will come a day that death itself will die. Every morning we get up and every day that we live in this life, we get news on either social media or by phone or, or by word of mouth that yet someone else has faced what we call or what the world calls death. And death, see, is something that's not, you're not running from it, you're headed to it. There is appointed time for man he can shorten his days, I believe, or the Bible teaches, honor thy father and thy mother and thy days may be lengthened upon the earth. But you know, you can be foolish about these things. I could get out here on this highway, put my gas pedal to the, to the floor and never let up and drive down this road and eventually I'm gonna run into destruction. But in a normal life, there is a day set that every man, no matter where you are, what they're doing, you're gonna leave this world. But let's look at this thing of death that we look at and it's an unwelcome visitor. Nobody wants him to come but the truth of the matter is by now as I look across this congregation, probably every home represented here has had to deal with this character.